what's up guys and welcome back to ask nk this is our weekly rundown of updates events and beautiful things happening within the blender community blender foundation and also blender as an app and this week we do have a couple of things kicking things off we're going to start talking about blender conference 2020 so the beacon 20 is happening it's happening on the 30th of october 2020 if you're using the 24 hour clock it's actually happening at 1800 hours which is the central european time but if you're using the 12 hour clock then of course this is exactly 6 pm that it's going to commence now if you want to see the postponed one which has to do with the 2020 la which was actually pushed due to the pandemic and also the lockdown you can take a look at this read the statement and if you want to see the 2019 version you can also see that one here so you can catch up with some of the things look at the speakers see how the shadow went and prepare yourself for the 2021 which is going to be massive now while we're speaking about the 2020 if you're a developer and you want to hang out with other developers there is a blender chat which is more like you know blender's own or blender foundation's own kind of discord so you can hang out with you know a couple of developers here now with this said let's also take a look at something that is actually developing and we're talking about nothing more than the blender cloud so blender cloud version 4 is here so in case you've been using blender cloud before you would know that this is looking very cool and for those who have no idea what blender cloud is it's just a service it's a place it's a platform where you can learn basically almost everything you want to learn in blender so right here you know there is a statement that says from a to uv yes they get you covered and you can literally start from scratch and get to a very good height in terms of your use for blender and while we're talking about cool stuff that's happening there's also another pretty cool announcement and this is called sprite fright it is blender studio 13th open movie and this is actually an 80s inspired horror comedy and if you want to take a look at some of the other open movies you, you can take a look at some of these things right here now something which is very interesting about this one is that the former pixar story supervisor matthew lohan will be taking center stage as the director for sure you know it's gonna be good because there is also a couple of other veterans right here like ricky nevera who has also worked on some couple of very lovely stuff and then we have Dick van and you know there's just a lot of cool people that are joining this stuff and it's very cool to see that blender is developing and of course if you want to read more about the open movie you want to catch up with some updates about this yes you can as i'm going to put a link in the description so you can check this out now while you're checking these things out the folks at blender foundation are urging you to also check out the beta version of blender 2.91 now the reason why they're urging you to do that is just in case there is something that is broken something they you know they forgot to fix you may have to report that now while we are looking at this there are certain updates that are happening with blender 2.92 so without further ado we're going to dive directly into 2.92 and take a look at some of the updates and some of the cool features that are coming since blender 2.91 is within its wrapping stage of course we've talked about the whole idea that blender 2.91 right now there is no new feature coming to it as most of the features in here are just being fine-tuned and refined to look better so without further ado let's dive over to blender 2.92 and take a look at some pretty cool features so we're going to start off all right we're going to start off by talking about something that you guys may have seen so what are we looking at we are looking at the space bar for selection now it's very interesting we're looking at the space bar for selection now it's very interesting to see because right now in previous apps you may have actually noticed this that once you create the marquee and you hold down the space bar you can move the marquee selection back and forth for me i think you know there are certain features that are coming in here that are looking quite similar to what you also have in zbrush because in zbrush if you hold down control and shift click and drag if you hold down the space bar you can also move things around so this one is uh is really good it's good because when you select this object and you switch over to your sculpting tool set as well you can do exactly the same thing so in terms of masking you want to create the mask you want to do stuff like that you can simply click drag hold down spacebar and move things around all right this makes sense the same thing happens with line tools as well so you know we talked about line gesture tools earlier and we looked at how much refinement is coming to this yes you can also do the same thing so if you click you can click and drag 
hold down spacebar and of course you can move things around now it's even very interesting because there are also some very cool stuff that you can do with this one so if you tap f on your keyboard you can easily switch the direction so you know we already talked about the idea that we wanted this gradient fall to be there and it's good to see we have it now if you tap f on your keyboard you can see that and if you tap f on your keyboard yeah you can see you can invert revert invert revert and this is very cool now with this set Let's also take a look at something Pablo is working on. So Pablo is consistently working on cool stuff. And one of the cool things that he's looking at right now is the fact that you can now insert meshes. So he's looking at the insert mesh brush. So with this tool, you can insert various meshes directly onto your 3D model. So if you're sculpting and you want to insert maybe like a cube, instead of going back and coming forward and, you know, making copies and paste, Yep, you can easily do these things now. And of course, this is one of the main reasons why I said that Blender sculpting is actually beginning to shape and look more like what you can obtain and what you can get with ZBrush. Because actually, in ZBrush, you can do exactly the same thing. So let's just go ahead and take a look at what this looks like. All right, so with ZBrush as well, if you press B on your keyboard and you get this out, you can go and tap I on the keyboard and you can insert a couple of things as well. So you can click this and then you can insert stuff like so. So it's very cool to see that, you know, you're not really losing anything by using Blender now as these things are coming in together. Of course, performance is a huge issue and obviously we might be getting better performance as Pablo has also suggested that he will be working on these things. Now, while we're talking about this, there's actually something I think we are about to leave out and that also deals with snapping. So if you select your object and hold and you hold down control, you can snap to different positions or different points. So it's about 15, 15 degrees snapping right now. And you can see this stuff. So you can snap and make a cup like that. Let's actually position this about the point like so. Make that selection. Tap F on the keyboard. You can cut this. All right, this looks cool. And I know it's going to be so useful for most of the people doing hard surfacing and stuff like that. So this is going to be very, very lovely tool for a lot of people to use. And another thing that is a very lovely tool that a lot of people would like to use, especially while sculpting, is this. So there is a, a very tiny feature that Pablo has also added to the boundary brush. So if we simply select an object and go over to sculpting and scroll all the way down, you'd notice we have a cool icon for the boundary brush. So if I select this boundary brush right now, click over here and scroll all the way down, I can switch whatever I have, which is the deformation target to close, and then switch the deformation to smooth. Actually, if we go back and let's use the grab and set this to close, let's do something like so. Oh, that looks good. Let's also do this. And maybe we should zoom a bit inwards and, you know, make some fold. And it's just very interesting how you can you know, move these things around and you can create some very lovely looking things that would take you years to make if you were using previous versions of Blender. So if we switch over to deformation, we can now choose smooth. And once we select the smooth object, we can now click and drag and that way we can smooth things. But is this feasible? I, I don't think so. For me, what I would do is going to be, you know, the quite opposite of using this tool. So instead of using this, which seems to be a bit slower because you can't actually get into some areas like this, I will simply go over to, you know, mesh filter, which I think is the best, and then select the filter type. And let's see. Yeah, we're going to simply keep this as surface smooth. And now I can easily click and drag and smooth out the entire thing. Let's change our brush real quick, as that brush doesn't simply change automatically now. So I'm going to select that. And now we can easily get a smoother looking stuff. For me, this is way more usable compared to what you we already have but of course this is still in its alpha so don't really you know expect this in the final one probably the final one is going to be way refined way better and it might even look and feel a bit more comfortable than it does right now so with this said let's also take a look at something else which is very very cool so the folks at blender foundation has actually done something very very impressive and now we're looking at grease pencil this is a very cool new feature we are looking at the fact that you can now drag in a footage so if you have like a footage maybe a video file of a sequence maybe a simple sequence like this you can now drag the sequence 
into blender and convert this to grease pencil so there are certain things i would like to talk to you guys about for this one because once you drag in this image and now you can see that this is actually a video file so once you drag this video file in this only works in certain you know things so right so it doesn't store the color like the default trace so it doesn't store the color so if you go over to the trace image to grease pencil right now you can now all right switch the mode from single to sequence and once you do that you can play with the resolution pipe that you want so if you want it to have a higher resolution yes you can if you want the thickness to be a bit too much you can get that set all the parameters and things that you want click on ok and there you have it so it traces the image and you have this beautiful thing to work with all right so now i can confidently turn this one off and press the playback button and you see we have grease pencil living and breathing right here so this is how you can turn your 2d paintings your 2d artworks into animations real time so if you're into sketching things convert those things to movie files like mp4 you can now literally bring those footages right into blender and then you can convert them to grease pencil and do a lot of things with them of course there is a lot of things you can do with grease pencil and we've talked about this one before for example if you simply select this object right now you can go over to the editing section and you know do some edits if you want to sculpt this you can also go over to the sculpt mode and you can sculpt this now fun fact is once you once you bring in this you can deform this object how you want and that will be stored so let's say i have the head popping up this way and i go to the next frame you can see if i go back to the first frame it simply stopped that so if i go to the second frame i can do maybe something like so and let's actually make this one go this way and if i go over to another frame let's drag this a bit upwards so you guys can see that all right so we can also do something like this and now if i go back and you can see so it stores all of your deformations and this is really cool so even if you don't have like the perfect you know you don't have the perfect looking drawing and maybe there's just some refinement you want to do on the pc you can bring these things right into blender convert them to animations make your changes and get your animations happening so this is you know this is a very very lovely one so a huge shout out to the folks working on the grease pencil as i actually enjoyed playing with this one when i did find out that it was something that was here so so far so good these are the updates that we have for the week but before we go a huge shout out to matthew for making the e-cycles renderer so if you ever wanted to get cycles to perform like five times faster then you must be kidding because cycles doesn't have that you know it doesn't really have that energy but e-cycles have something even way more than that out of the box you can get from 13% to 41% or 41 times faster rendering directly by simply using eCycles. Now, the beautiful thing about this is eCycles is on 30% discount sale. So just in case you want to get this one, you can actually come through and take a look at it. eCycles is also available for Blender 2.79 all the way to 2.9. And for sure, this is not the only thing that Matthew has as he also has a couple of things as well. So he has the eCycle AI denoiser. If you want to make your own Blender, he has you know, a package for you. You can take a look at that. And if you want to get eCycles, you want cycles to be on steroids, I know, then you can also get that. This is compatible with everything that you've ever done in Blender before, as this gives you unlimited opportunities to save time and create extremely fast looking and clean renders. Now, if you're looking for charts, you know, you want to measure things up, there is a benchmark that shows you what's going on with the default blender, what's going on with e-cycles, and what's going on with e-cycles on steroids. So, link to this is going to be in the description just in case you want to take a look. And with that said, a huge shout out to the folks at Blender Foundation for making all of this pretty cool stuff available. So, Beacon is coming. If your developer joined the chat, if you want to read the Tuesday, you know, uh, talks, you can also take a look at the link in the description so you can read that out. And for sure, links to everything I've talked about is also going to be in the description. So you can do well to check these things out. Tell me what you guys think about this in the comment section. And of course, if you like this video or you learned something from this, you can go ahead and give it a like and don't forget to share with a friend. And if you're new here, it's going to be amazing for you to hit the subscribe button and also turn on the notification so that you don't miss the next video or the next update. And until I see you guys again with the tutorial update, pre-Friday, tutorial Tuesday, tips and tricks, things like this. Peace.